the Science and Technology Select Committee held a session called My Science Inquiry, where UK scientists got to pitch for their field of study to be the subject of a future inquiry by the committee. Each scientist had five minutes to address the committee before MPs had a chance to ask questions. Welcome. So I'm here not just as myself, but representing about 200 of my colleagues from across the country, all from different STEM disciplines, so disciplines in science, technology, engineering, maths and medicine. Now all of us passionately want to improve the diversity of the STEM workforce, and that's a workforce which currently utterly fails to reflect the diversity of the UK population. Now that lack of diversity does mean that there are thousands of people who are missing out on opportunities for fantastic careers in science. But I'm here to tell you this is not just a problem for those people. It's a real problem for science and by extension for the UK economy. Increasing diversity in STEM is going to open up new avenues of research because it's going to bring in new talent, new ways of thinking into our, our disciplines, new creativity. There's actually increasing evidence in the literature that both gender diversity and racial diversity in research groups leads to better quality science with greater impact. Now, the lack of diversity in STEM has many complex causes, but some of them really can be addressed by changes to government policy or to regulation. One thing which government controls is the purse strings. Taxpayers' money is used to fund scientific research and training in science, and government delegates the task of distributing that money to a number of bodies, most prominently UKRI, but also other bodies. It's incredibly important that money is distributed fairly, without the influence of conscious or unconscious bias coming into funding decisions. We need to really avoid funding mechanisms which prop up the current status quo which favours particular groups, and those funding mechanisms damage prospects for diversity. Now, I'd love to stand in front of this committee today and say, we've identified this is where the problems are in the funding system, and this is what you ought to do and solve it. But I can't. The data which are available simply don't have the necessary detail. The UKRI do publish some data, and they show that if you look at success rates applying for grants between different groups, they're often fairly similar. Unfortunately, those data simply conceal problems. I'll give you an example from the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council. That's the funding council I mostly work with. Now, about 20% of the EPSRC's researcher base is female. But if we take 2016 to 2017, fewer than 7% of all research grants went to teams led by women. And the average size of the grants going to those women were 40% lower than the grants going to men. But those data had to be obtained by a female scientist making a Freedom of Information request. There is some data available on the question of gender. But when we get into other questions, race, sexual orientation, gender expression, disability, social class. On those questions, the data is poor or in many cases non-existent. So the first thing that needs to be done to make our funding environment help improve diversity is make sure that the data which are available are analysed in proper granular depth so we can see which funding streams are disproportionately routing money towards particular groups. Do some subject areas fund particular groups disproportionately? Are there different ways of delivering funding which help diversity? For example, we have managed calls and we have responsive mode calls. Are one of those better than the other? Once we have that data, the next step is to identify why certain funding streams tend to improve or damage diversity. Is it because certain groups do apply but fail to win funding? If so, where is the bias in the system? Is it because the rates of application from particular groups are very low? If so, we can't just say, oh, well, those groups need to do better. We need to look at the barriers to their application for that funding. And once we've identified the problems, the funding bodies need to take action to solve these problems. They need to break down barriers, eliminate biases. And we need to do that in a framework of international best practice. We want the UK to be a leader in diversity in science. Now, this committee is right now addressing balance in UK research funding. The committee will make re recommendations that are going to influence future funding streams and opportunities. If you ignore issues of equality, diversity, inclusion and accessibility, 
you risk exacerbating the current problems. If you take on the inquiry we propose, you can be part of the solution. You can remove any regulatory hurdles which prevent these diversity problems being addressed. You can influence the funding bodies, and by doing that, you'll influence the whole broader STEM ecosystem, including industry. Hence, we call upon the committee to open an inquiry into the extent to which funding policies, procedures and cultures Marks to close. are damaging diversity in STEM, and we ask you to recommend policy changes that will level the playing field and safeguard the future of UK science. Thank you very much <coughs> indeed. And I, I just wanted to start by asking you whether you wanted to focus particularly on uh, funding policies and the culture around that. Uh, and how that leads to underrepresentation in the awards uh, that are made to groups uh, on gender, uh, on race, etc., or whether you also wanted to look at the reasons why groups are underrepresented <coughs> in STEM careers in the first place. Um, I mean, I, I've seen interesting research, for example, on the people who end up taking triple science at GCSE and underrepresentation of people from lower socioeconomic groups. Uh, so that they get cut off in their early teens and never have the chance to go into uh, a STEM career. Uh, so w w what's, what, how limited do you want your scope to be? Well, I'm suggesting an inquiry which really does focus on the funding streams, and there are some very good reasons for that. One of the big problems with science is what we call the leaky pipeline. We're actually feeding quite a lot of young people from diverse backgrounds into the beginning of the Senate STEM ecosystem, doing degrees, moving forward. And at every level, we lose women, we lose ethnic minorities, we lose disabled people out of that pipeline. Now, I believe that if we fix funding, we're going to fix a lot of that problem. Because whether you get funding really determines whether you do good research. Doing that good research is what gets you the next job. It's what gets you the good papers. It's what gets you the promotion. It's what gets those people who are moving up the stream to be the mentors, the sponsors, and the role models for the young people coming through. There's been a lot of work on trying to encourage people young children in schools, right up to GCSE and then A-level into science. But if we've got a leaky pipe, there's not a lot of point first pouring lots more water in the top before we go and fix the leaks. So what I want this committee to do is go and look at ways that we can fix those leaks, which will influence the entire ecosystem. Thank you. Other questions? Carol? Yeah, I mean, amen. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the, the, there's, I suppose this is such a complex issue and as you've said it starts very, very young and we see the issues all the way through. Um, I'm just wondering about, I mean, funding may make a difference and hopefully would make, increase diversity within the academic field. Um, how is it going to change industry? Because a lot of our in fact, the majority of our young scientists and engineers are not staying in academia, they're going out to industry. And funding academia is not going to fix a leaky pipe there. Well, partly the UKRI pipeline is indeed sending some of its funding to industry now, because that involves Innovate UK. So there is industry funding in the same scheme. But also it really is about having the people who will inspire young people in academia who can advise, mentor and show people the way because those are the people who are directing young people into careers in industry. And I actually feel that fixing the STEM pipeline in academia can really help send talent, diverse talent, male, female, black, white, all sorts of people into the industries with skill shortages, which is one of the reasons I feel quite strongly that this is something that needs to be done. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Um, Listening to, listening to your submission, there's really two steps to this, isn't it? The first one is the data, yeah. the actual information. And, the, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, actually your call out is first, let us get the data, which would be something that, that, that this committee asks for. And only once that data is present can the next steps be taken about the analysis, the funding, the, the removal of the bias from it. Mm -hmm. Is my understanding of that right? So I think it's incredibly important to do this on a data-driven basis yeah. because um, we don't want to start solving problems that are not right. there. Yeah? And also, the data at a granular level will point to where the changes need to be made. So the data has to be done first, but I think 
I would be very disappointed if this committee took on this inquiry and then m m found a way to mandate better data collection and better data publication, but didn't try and ensure something was done with that data. Yes. It can't be write-only okay. data, which is essentially what it is at the moment. It has to be a situation where, where the data is showing up problems, and some of I'm sure will show up rather significant problems, that it's mandatory to take action, and take action in consultation with the relevant communities. I just want to bring in one very quick final question from Stephen. Um, Thank you. I mean, I completely agree with your analysis of the problem, and I, every person I've ever met says the problem is exactly the same across the whole science community. And to be fair, we've been looking into this probably the time I've been on the committee the last eight and a half years. Why is it going to be different this time because we do another inquiry and make some recommendations when across the whole landscape everyone's trying to address the same problem? So they could already do a lot of the stuff you're talking about. Well, I think there's two things. Firstly, I'm asking you to do something very specific, which is look at the funding infrastructure. It's very, there's been an awful lot of inquiries that have led to very broad recommendations. I'd like this to be quite tight in the hope that it's effective. But the second thing is we are in the infancy of UKRI. This is the time to embed good practice in that organisation. And doing it now is going to make a difference potentially for generations to come. Thank you very much indeed. Appreciate your time. Thank you.